I'm the general manager for Tequila Los Abuelos, is our corporate name. And um, we're located in the town of Tequila, outside of Guadalajara, about four hours from the coastline. This is our little distillery here. And we're very fortunate because it belonged to my grandfather. So there's a story. You gotta have a story if, if you want somebody to tell it, you have to have a good story. And the excess this year. And um, so there, that's the place. So it's very magical. I have a question for you all. I'm gonna stop for a minute. How many of you would, would go back to Disneyland now? Well, my son would, because he has two children. <laughs> uh, the rest of you, if you don't have children, how many would go back to Disneyland? You wouldn't. I mean, I would. So, yeah, it's a destination. It's a place. It's memorable. It's an experience. But I don't go back. And what we got to get is we got to get these people to come back. We got to get these people to be, we call them repeat offenders. So that's what we try to do. So we kind of tackled this a little differently. Uh, we have uh, two facilities. We have a uh, how many of you, by the way, are working with a brand right now? You have your own brand or are working with a brand? That are... Okay, good. So this is, re is this relevant for you guys? Okay. So we had the same problems that Tom had starting up, like, hey, we can make some tequila now. Now what the hell do we do with it? You know? It's like, where are you going to sell it? So we went through a lot of trials and changes and, we should have just bought his consulting at the beginning because <laughs> we would have honed this all in a lot faster, I can tell you that. We would have figured out who the swimmers were and the paddlers and it would have been a lot faster. But on our property, it's a beautiful property, 80 acres, the small distillery there. So I'll tell you a little bit about the story. Beautiful facility, great presentation on the, the distillery. There's me on the land when I was a young kid. So I grew up there. I, I, I like, wow, this is like my home. I need to share this. That's what I said to myself. I need to share this. And we were struggling along when we first started. Hadn't bro broke even yet. Tom was all about this. How are you going to make payroll? More money going into the black hole. At any rate, we did start with some tours. I thought, well, if we tour people, people will get to know the brand. But I didn't know all of the good stuff that Jason knows. I just knew I, we needed to get people to tour it because I knew if somebody comes, they're going to like it. They're going to talk about it. And we figure about one person that comes in, they'll talk to 10 people. They'll tell 10 people about their experience. If they like the juice, they'll ten, tell 10 people. Well, so we started with fans coming around. Typical aficionados, people that might like, if you make gin, they might like gin, you know, you call them an aficionado. So we would get the tequila aficionados. And over time, uh, we uh, developed the tour as it went along. Uh, maybe we didn't know exactly our strategy of what we needed to give these people. But those aficionados are kind of like the paddlers. You got to give them five things. You got to give them a little bit that they can take to other people, and they do. And you know what? They come back. So we struggled with how to develop that, but now it's ended up into a two and a half hour tour over the property. We have three to four tours a day. And remember, we're an hour out of Guadalajara, and nobody's coming from Guadalajara, so I can't really do what Tom's doing me. And, and I could put something in the airport, but, but we're an hour out of town. So I'm getting people coming from the United States that happen to be in Mexico. They know about us and they're making an appointment because we only do this by appointment. And what we tell them, well, I'm going to step back. We do have a museum. We have the house of my great-great-grandfather. So we got kind of a step up that a lot of people don't have. 
and it's already turned into a museum. We get about 10,000 people through there. Mostly, mostly tourism from Mexico, but you know what? There's a big problem with that for me. They can't afford our tequila. They're not our, they don't buy anything. They go in, they take the tour, they love it. They, met, they, know, they know the brand, they've heard of it. They, they love the tour. And the problem I have is they, I don't depend on this for hardly any sales. It sells, but it's 95% of our sell is outside of the country. So we have tours there. You don't have to have an appointment there. Over at the distillery, you have to have an appointment. And what we do over at the distillery, we're showing the stone crushing that we do, hand bottling, tops made. I'll have to show you the bottle because many of you probably haven't seen it. That's a first distillation, but look how small the stills are. So when people walk through, they're like, you really make your stuff here? You're not buying it from somebody? Oh, we make it all here. I was somewhat younger in that picture. That was uh, about 20 years ago. Not 18 years ago, that was. At any rate, we give them a tour over at the distillery. They see the fields of agave. And we cap that off with a tasting in the cave. See the cave? It's an authentic cave. And people are stunned. And a couple, a couple comments we get is we thought you were BSing us because you're marketing materials. But then they come through and they see and they see it's all actual. And uh, they have their doubts about us making the volume that we're making through the stills that we have. And these are the paddlers. You got to give them enough to be dangerous. Then we did a tour for some distillery guys, and we kind of fell into this. We decided to do what we call an industry tour. And that's been 10 years now. We've had over 4,000 restaurant industry, retail industry people visit us. I think it's probably one of the best in the industry. And that's what's really helped us, is all the industry people that came down. And that was also a, a, a work in progress where we had to fix a lot of things. So imagine getting all these industry people down. It's a three-day trip. And imagine the industry people coming down, and you guys know bartenders, you know bar backs, and they all drink. Sometimes they drink too much. So we had to deal with that. We had to deal with making sure they were watered up all the time. They always had food so that they wouldn't get trashed. We added distilleries. We added our friends at Ete Distillery. Eduardo Jr. is right over here. And uh, so it wasn't a tour of just our distillery. It became a tour of Eduardo's distillery, too. And it became a tour of Sergio's distillery. And this was all a process of trial and error. And we found that they liked the tour of more distilleries. So it wasn't just about one distillery. But there was one thing we all have in common. It's all family owned. And they love that, too. So we ended up adding glass blowing. They get to go blow their own bottle. In the end, we found out of these 4,000 people plus that have come down now, we get these kind of comments. Best trip I've ever been on. Thanks for inviting me. They never invite the bartenders. They only invite the managers. I got my passport for this trip. America, by the way, Americans don't travel. And you probably know that. 90% of Americans never leave America. So they go, I got my passport for this. Now I'm going to travel the world. Thank you very much for pushing me to do this. We didn't push them. We just invited them. They pushed themselves. At any rate, those are the kinds of comments we got from them with our industry trip. We do uh, six trips a year. We run about 450 bartenders, servers. We've had three chefs come down, and they love it. They all go back, and you, some of you probably knew our brand already, and that's because somebody told you about it. It's all word of mouth. We don't do any advertising at all. And finally, we put one more trip in. 
we put an industry work program where qualified individuals can come and do all the jobs in our distillery. And that's an amazing uh, change that we see from people because, uh, well, obviously it's extremely educational, but it's very tough. Everybody leaves very tired and with blisters in their hands. But I think if I can characterize, people leave humbled and appreciative of having to do the work that our workers do. We have 85 employees and how hard it is to do to make tequila the old way, make the tequila like it was made 150 years ago. So we created these experiences to and we're more focused on the industry than on the retail. We have our retail piece with the museum, but we have our uh, industry focus, which we feel helps us a lot more in, in the growth. We're in 26 countries now. And uh, so what else are we doing? We're adding lakeside private meals. Uh, two weeks ago, we had a bar owner from uh, Sevilla there with his wife having lunch by the lakeside, a personal chef grilling for him, and they just absolutely loved it. It's an experience they'll remember the rest of their life. Uh, a month ago, a bartender proposed at our lookout point, so something him and his wife will, his fiance, will remember the rest of their lives. Uh, we're going to rehabilitate the museum to up the quality on the retail side and on the paddler side, as you might say. And we're going to do a little bit more recruiting local hotels. We've never even touched hotels. We've never even taken a brochure for hotels to visit. So there's a lot of things you can do to generate more people to come. And look, we're 15 years in and nobody's ever taken a, a brochure to a hotel to tell them that we do tours. So those are some of the things that are happening. Our uh, go forward issues for us being a small brand is how do we maintain authenticity, the personality? So Cuervo came to us, Cuervo's our neighbor, very big company, and they have a beautiful train and I love trains. And they wanted to put a train station on our property because we're between them and the railroad tracks. We've got a very good spot. And we fortunately decided, without a, this strategy just came by accident. Like I said, I should have hired him. We decided that that train was full of people that really weren't our clients and really couldn't afford it. So we are, we are happy we did not make the mistake of going into partnership with Cuervo for the tourism business. Cuervo does have a big tourism business. They drive in a million people a year into the town. So it's enormous, but it's not our client. It's not the guy that's gonna go and be the repeat offender or the repeat buyer or be in the wine club. So those are some of the issues we have as you get growing and you get more and more people on. How do we maintain the tranquility of that property to maintain the experience? Harry was, Harry's in the back, Harry owns Park Street, he's a great friend and best service, by the way. How do you maintain that tranquility? So Harry's telling me this morning, man, when you get to your place, the big gates and you open the gates and it's like going into uh, this tranquil place and it's a garden and it's a, a small, tiny distillery. There's horses, there's sheep there, it's pastoral. And it's like you're out of the world all of a sudden. And you, you've got this sense of a place that you want to come back to. And at any rate, we do this all with uh, four ambassadors helping us out. And uh, it's been a team effort. So, but that's how we do it, uh, what we're doing in the market to uh, have this distillery where where people want to come back. We even make t-shirts that say repeat offender. So for people that visit again and that are industry, they get the repeat offender t-shirt. 
At any rate, I hope this was useful for you all that can understand uh, how we structured it for our being our based on our location. And thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank <laughs> you.